your own bank. My talk today is about thinking as a corporation how to be your own bank in the context of the gallery stack we are building. Every good Bitcoin presentation starts with a meme. Where are we going? We don't need banks, right? And if you think about the mantra of Bitcoin, it's really people money, right? It's a bottom-up movement where you should actually don't need a bank to use Bitcoin. This is the point of Bitcoin. But if you think about the context of corporation, the idea is that maybe as a corporation you can become your own bank. Today, banking is being disrupted from the base layer. If I use a US dollar, today as an individual, I need to go through a bank. I can't myself just go to the Fed and say, hey, I would like to have a, a checking account. The system is, is closed, it's permissioned. Also, if you try to send money overseas, you understand that the system is slow and expensive. And as a matter of fact, the system is becoming risky. Today, your banks, your dollar in the banks, you don't know if it's really being secured, right? We've seen this very recently with all the bank selling. On the other hand, Bitcoin is this open permissioned system that's in, that is instant and free with lightning or almost free. And if used properly, you don't have any counterparty risk. If you're a corporation, how to think about this new ecosystem? What are you going to do as a corporation? Well, hopefully not this. This is a quote from William Horton, president of Western Union, regarding the telephone in 1876. What use could this company make of an electrical, electrical toy? Western Union at the time was doing telegraph, and they think telephone is a toy, and they got disrupted. Today, Western Union is doing remittance payments around the world, and guess what? They're going to be disrupted again. If you're a corporation, what use could you make of magic internet money, or I should say open source programmable money? You may be using Bitcoin for a variety of reasons. I think this has been extensively talked about yesterday. I will sum up that it can help with contributing inflation, it can help for counterparty risk. It can also improve your PNL. If you use Lightning, you will have less fees to send and receive money. In this talk, I will be talking about the banking layer that sits on top of the Bitcoin protocol and the Lightning network. If you're a corporation today and you want to integrate Lightning, you need to think about this different building block. The first one and probably most important, part, most important one is custody. But you need to think about payments, you need to think about accounting, and also volatility management. This is the four building block I'm going to talk right now. I'll start with custody. The first time you hear about Bitcoin, you say, okay, you know, there is 12 words, you want to write them somewhere, you put them in a notepad because you don't fully understand how this works. Hopefully if you have 100,000 Bitcoin, you're not doing this, but you're using a multi-sig solution where you have a different set of key holder that have each one key and it's part of a quorum, right? Maybe you have six out of seven keys and you need six key holder to sign a transaction for it to be approved. We are using a solution called Spectre Wallet for our custody in our banking stack. And this is one of the beauty of Bitcoin and open source money is that the time we were thinking about, hey, we need a, a custody solution to make the cold storage secure with a multi-sig, we were thinking whether we should build it ourselves or whether we should use a solution that is available. And there was a perfect fit with Spectre, so we decided to use that. If you think about custody, it's really low velocity payments, right? If you macro strategy, maybe you buy Bitcoin every month, so you have one transaction per month. If you start thinking about, as a business, doing payment for day-to-day -day operation, you're going to the more higher frequency payments, 
where maybe you're doing a, to a thousand of transactions a day, maybe a million of transactions a day. And your keys also need to be somewhere connected. You're not going to have six key holder going to take their hardware wallet to make a transaction every time someone buy a coffee. But you need to think about security, right? Like, do you want to have your keys stored on a Google server or Amazon AWS server? Maybe not. So you need to think about maybe you want to have a HSM hardware security module, for instance. You need to think about key rotation. You need to think about resiliency, about the stem with like multiple nodes uh, in different places. We're building a solution called Buya that sits on top of LND and Bitcoin D that makes that possible. Accounting is another key point in thinking about Bitcoin for cooperation. If you use Bitcoin D today, you have a single entry accounting system. What does it mean? You have a set of UTX or a set of Bitcoin and you can send and receive. Again, Bitcoin is meant to be money for individual. So it makes sense in the context of this client to be a single entry bookkeeping system. But for the past 500 years, corporations have been using a double entry bookkeeping system. So now you have your assets, which is your UTXO, your Lightning Channel. You need to think about the liability, right? Maybe if you're a bank, you receive money from your customer. You want to make sure that your liability is the money you owe to your customer. Maybe it's also the money that you should be sending to your employee at the end of the month. Maybe it's a loan that you're taking match your assets. Today, because money is permissioned, there is actually no open source library that does larger scale double entry bookkeeping. The only companies that use this type of system today are banks, but we believe as more companies will become their own banks, there need to be open source systems that enable this use case. We are developing a library called SQLX Ledger that aim to solve this problem. Lastly, I will talk about volati volatility management. Probably most of the companies in this room today are US companies that have dollar on their bank account, maybe actually buying treasuries, you know, because it might be safer than getting, than just putting your dollar in a bank account. Actually, it might not be because if the debt ceiling is not being resolved at the end of the month, what are you going with your T-bills? What are you going to do with it? But anyway, the point is that in the US, you have your dollar in some financial system. If you're a corporation in Argentina, you don't have this ability to just put your dollar in the bank and expect that if something goes wrong, the Fed will backstop it. And you can say, okay, I'm going to use Bitcoin. It's, it's, it's the best system out there. The challenge today is if you're starting to use Bitcoin for day to day, you still have volatility. And you need to manage this volatility somehow. You can just expect the price go up, but you can also use tool to say, okay, maybe I want to use Bitcoin as a payment network, but I will not be using necessarily Bitcoin as an asset by hedging your Bitcoin position. We are developing a product called StableSats that use hedging solution derivative network so that you can send money in and out of Lightning without having the volatility of Bitcoin. I'll use a quote from Michael Saylor for why this is really important. This quote is from regarding Lightning Killer app at Bitcoin 2022. When 8 billion people have a Lightning wallet with BTC as a store value and USD as a medium of exchange, you're going to see tens of trillions, then hundreds of trillions of dollars moving on Lightning wells. People are going to wake up and realize, holy crap, this stuff is going to change the world. If you put the different building blocks that I just talked about, a multi-sig wallet to have secure cold storage, a payment solution over Lightning, a way to hedge the price of Bitcoin with stable sets, you can come up with 
a wallet like Blink, formerly known as a Bitcoin Beach wallet, that is one of the main wallets being used in El Salvador, the first country who have adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. Because we're operating this wallet for almost three years now, we have some good idea about how to build these different building blocks that will be used eventually by corporation in the future, and how to you know, destructure this monolith, if you want, into a different set of microservices architecture. I don't have time to go into the detail of our solution. There is more to it. There is an admin panel. There is a lot of uh, tool around automation and CI CD pipeline. If you want to know more, you can go into our GitHub page, github.com slash money, and you can see you know, how you can use our tool for your company. I'll end this presentation by with this quote from Victor Hugo saying, no force on earth can stop an idea with time had come, has come. Thank you very much.